Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. When Amy Cuddy says that being genuine and really knowing ourselves will give us the ultimate presence, do we really know who our true self is? That's what we'll talk about today. Know Thyself was written over the portal of the antique world. Over the portal of the new world, Be Thyself shall be written. Oscar Wilde. In the last podcast, we talked about Amy Cuddy's book, Presence, and the importance of presence and how to give yourself a boost when it comes to having presence. Today, we'll talk about how to gain the ultimate presence, the ultimate power, and that's by knowing yourself. Learning who you really are will give you the most authority, the most genuine power you can have. But do you really have to know yourself? Or is it okay to fake it till you make it? Or have a good idea of who you are? She gives a practice from an organizational behavior professor, Laura Morgan Roberts. She had some exercises that she hoped that people would try. Roberts helps people to figure out their best identity by, first of all, jotting down three words that best describe you as an individual, and then asking you about what's unique about yourself that makes you perform the best and makes you the happiest. And then she asked people to reflect, whether you're at home, at work, about times when you felt natural, when you felt right. I mentioned before that Allison at podfeet.com said that she would talk to her employees and say, when were those times at work where you just felt like you could do no wrong, that you were just doing great and you felt great about yourselves? And then when were those times where you felt you were slogging, when you were really forcing yourself to produce, when you were just not enjoying what you did? Because she was a good boss, she tried to drive that out of people. This particular professor is trying to get people to drive it out of themselves. But however you get it out of yourself, what exactly felt great? What made you feel naturally great about your day? And then how can you figure out how you can do more of that? And then she asks you to identify what your signature strengths are and how you can use them. She says, as soon as you identify all these strengths, these authentic identity items that are there, you must start to believe them. If you say, I'm at my best when I'm helping people in my company organize. And if you don't believe that's true, or you give yourself a lot of self-doubt, but nobody needs that. Maybe I just am not good at anything at work. If you start destroying the very thing that you're good at, it's going to hurt you when trying to get that, what she calls a personal story together. You don't believe your own personal story. Nobody else will. She says sometimes people will try to find what their common core values are. If it's religion, if it's a particular professional status that you have, and then write a short essay why that very short list of values is important to them so that you can read that over and over again and understand this is who I am and this is what's most important to me. And she gives some examples of a small paragraph that someone might write when they figure out what their core values are. And it's important because this type of small paragraph will help you understand your own story, believe your own story, and it will make you feel great about the task you're doing. Maybe you hate public speaking. Maybe it's something you just despise. But when you go out into communities and you talk about the value of education, maybe that's the thing that's most important to you. You light up like a Christmas tree. I have a friend of mine that if you had told me that she was going out and doing public speaking, I never would have believed it. She doesn't like talking to strangers anywhere. But then she found the thing that lights her up, the value that she has, the thing that became most important to her her most authentic interest. And as soon as she found that, which I mean, wow, you know, if you can find something in your life, that's a great thing to find. It suddenly transformed her. She was going out and doing public speaking, not because she loved public speaking, but because she loved this thing so much that it drove away all the other fears and made her go out and do something so that she could share this love and the importance of it with other people. That's when you know you've really found your authentic self. And that's what my friend really has. Because when you see her speak about something and her voice cracks a little bit and you could tell she's nervous about it, you understand that she is saying the honest truth, that she is saying the thing that is most important for her to say. It's about that honesty that she shows through. 
When you see people who try to beat other people in a conversation or beat their opinion down into the ground because I'm confident and I'm going to tell you what you should believe, that's not what someone who is really, truly confident does. A true confident person can listen to other views, other opinions, even if it's directly against their opinion. And what she says diffuses it as a threat. True belief is grounding. It makes you have that presence she's asking you to gain. And it makes you have that presence. She says that true presence manifests itself as confidence without arrogance. We've seen the people who are super confident in our lives and we blur that line between confidence and people who are just arrogant and impossible to be around. But when someone has that true confidence in them, they are someone who's able to listen to what you say, take in what you're able to say and give it a true assessment. That is true confidence. There's been some discussion recently that I've heard in other podcasts talking about narcissists. And the thing that they're finding out is sometimes it's the very people who act the boldest, the most confident, they know exactly what they want you to know, are sometimes the people who are actually narcissists. We, we know they're narcissists, but what you don't know about them is they're crumbling inside. They have no confidence. They don't believe in themselves. They are trying to give this image, almost like the story you hear about miniature pincher dogs. And so this dog just barks and barks and barks and barks and barks because it's trying to defend its space, even though it's tiny and couldn't possibly defend its space. But that bark is supposed to scare you off. And you've seen dogs like that. And people can be like that too. They can be ultimate narcissists because they don't believe that they're worth anything in reality. So once you really gain that true knowledge of yourself, that true ability to find what matters to you and a trust of what you're good at, and what you do naturally that makes you feel the best, that will give you honest confidence so that you don't have to beat other people down. You can listen to opposing ideas and you can have good discussions about it. The important thing to keep in mind is even if we are anxious and we are nervous, audiences understand that. They want to know that they're watching someone who's authentic, someone who believes what they're saying, someone who cares about what they're saying. It's not just about having this flawless presentation, this flawless discussion that is smooth, a TED Talk, amazing, all those things. They want to know someone is genuine. Amy Cuddy in her book talks a little bit about Julianne Moore. She's the actress who's been in a number of movies. And they talked a little bit about presence. I mean, one thing you can understand is that actors have to have a very high level of presence because... They're trying to show you this character and make you believe this character. What Julianne Moore said is that people who lack presence sometimes feel like they're not being seen, that they're being ignored. People around them don't even know that they exist and that there's really no place for them. And then it becomes self-fulfilling. You don't feel like you belong. You don't feel like anyone cares about you. You don't feel like anyone's seeing you. And suddenly... It makes you anxious, nervous, and it goes down this rabbit hole. You're getting worse and worse. And she said that as a kid, she felt that way all the time. She longed to be seen, that she had troubles figuring out who she was. Sometimes she wanted to be seen. Sometimes she didn't want to be seen. And she said that she realized at some point, I have to figure this out. I have to figure out this challenge of finding my identity and finding that authentic best self that we talked about earlier so that she could be seen and be seen in the way she wants to be seen. And she felt like until she did that, no one was really going to see her and that that was important for her to get. And once she got it, it's amazing because then she learned how to become an actress and really do this for a living. And then what Julianne Moore said is, Preparation is obviously important, but at some point you must stop preparing content and start preparing mindset. You shift from what you'll say, how you'll say it. And that's what's really important because it's not just about you writing a speech or you going to a job interview and listing this out. This is about you actually figuring out how it needs to be said, not just what needs to be said. And Amy Cuddy said that when you become present, it allows other people to be present. And the present doesn't make you dominant. 
It actually allows other people to be heard, other people to feel heard. They will become more powerful. You'll become more powerful. And both people will be together in that power. She says that there's two kinds of power out there. There's a social power is how you exude influence on other people. Can you convince people? Do they trust you? Do they give you that ability to control a situation? While personal power is more freedom from being dominated by other people. Are you free to be you? Are you able to be the person you want to be? And she says that that's not two contradictory things. When people feel powerless, they feel like they can't get what they really need. They can't get to the mental state they really need. And that's where the anxiety, the feeling that you're not being heard or that you don't have presence. That powerlessness is damaging to that person. They already didn't feel heard. They already had anxiety. And now when they start remembering all the times they didn't have power, it makes them even more anxious than before. And it starts dragging that person down into a loop. So we have to regain our power through that authentic identity, through the things that we're really good at and that what we really love so that we can regain our power and let go of that impaired, anxious feeling that we get. And she said that once we do start feeling powerful, if we can get to that authentic self, it can protect us. It helps us against rejection. It helps us against stress. She says it can even help us against physical pain. It makes us feel fearless. It makes us feel more powerful. We're allowed to actually be creative. We feel like we're seen. We feel like it affects our body and gaining that power by finding that authentic self will enable you to do so many more things than you ever dreamed that you could do. She said that they were taught Lord Acton's axiom, which says all power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And she realized that it's not power that corrupts. Power can be amazing. It can reveal our true self. It can help us help other people. It can help us make other people feel like they're powerful too. We can empower other people when we're powerful. The real problem is that power becomes petty and it really is damaging, not so much the power, but more that feeling like we have to dominate other people. It can be corrupting. It doesn't have to be corrupting. One of the ways that you can really lose your power, lose your presence is by doing what she calls the eye posture. And that is them looking at their devices slumped over and not paying attention to the world around them. They're not looking at other people. They're not interacting with the world around them. They're not giving eye contact to other people. They're just slumped over their eye device. While we have powerful poses, we have powerless poses, but we also have the eye posture, which means I am checked out. I am looking at my phone. I'm not paying attention to anyone else or anything else. After all this time where you're trying to build your presence and try to find out who you are and bring your genuine self together, make sure that you do everything to keep your presence, show it with your body and have your body saying exactly what your voice is saying and make sure that your body is not saying a message like I don't care or I'm checked out when you really don't feel that way. Have your body and your voice speaking in one concise message. Summary, try to identify your true self, finding the three words that describe you, figuring out what's unique about you and when you're at your happiest and best performance. Two, list out what your signature strengths are and how you tend to use them. And once you have these items, identify your values. Is it religion? Is it fitness? Is it your work life? And then write a small paragraph that incorporates these together. She calls it an essay so that you can reflect on it when maybe you're not feeling so strong about it or you need to convince yourself what you're really passionate and great at. Three, make sure you're confident but not arrogant. Allow other people to tell their story allow them to be themselves too. That way, your power shows through without being arrogant or being a narcissist. Four, find the things that make you feel powerful, whether it's the posture, whether it's that paragraph that you wrote earlier, because when you feel empowered, other people will feel empowered 
and you will start building energy off of each other. Powerlessness prevents you from having presence, prevents you from being your authentic self. Challenge. We're going to do the challenge that was mentioned before. Start the work on developing your essay about your true self and lay the groundwork for us because you want to figure out when you are at your best and what makes you at your best. So find out those three best words that describe you. Find the things that are unique about you. Reflect on when you feel the best or most natural and then list your signature strengths and how you use them. Do you use them to help other people? Do you use them to make your work better? Or do you use them to lift other people up? Whatever it is, those items will help you identify your values, your traits, your strengths, so that you can start your essay about your authentic self. And now for our fun entertainment advice of the week. It comes from Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson in Lost in Translation. Oh, yeah. Look at you. Thanks. <laughs> the more you know who you are and what you want, the less you let things upset you. That's great advice. You should know yourself. He knows it. But the thing he should know about himself is he needs a lot more caffeine and maybe to take naps. He sounded really tired. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. I appreciate it. Please email me at jill at smallstepspod.com if you have any questions or if you have a topic that you would like for me to cover. And let me know how I can help you. Have a great week, everyone. Bye.